has a, a different take on the potato pancake. Fascinating, isn't it? I know it, but today they're roasty. Or... I'm roasty. I'm roasty. Yes, it's a very simple, crispy potato cake. Can't wait. Salt Welcome to the Chef's Kitchen. I'm your host, Tina Marie, and today we are celebrating Boston flavors in Kennebunkport style as we celebrate with some of our finest Boston culinary talent, Chef Evan DeLuty, a great friend of the Chef's Kitchen. It's wonderful to have you here, sir. Thank you. It's wonderful to be here once again, Tina Marie, and I love being here with the whole crew We're up here in at Maine. and gorgeous Chase Hill events. And actually, today we'll be culminating in a wonderful gala dinner. This evening, yes. Yes, you'll be in attendance there, yes, as well we as some, some of your other Wonderful Boston chefs, friends. Michael Schlau, yes. Mark Orfali from Pigal, and Michael from Radius, and Via Mata. So today, you're going to be showcasing for us a great recipe. We were talking, we're going to start out with the rosti. The pomo rosti, right? yes. Which is a, a take on a potato pancake, but very different. Very, in some ways similar. You know, there's no onion, no flour, mm -hmm. no egg. This is just as basic as it gets. A crispy, perfectly, uh, just wonderfully crispy potato. Yeah. Crispy, crispy, and then soft on the inside. A little wedge with a little rack of lamb. We have some wonderful Colorado domestic, you know, obviously domestic Colorado. So where do we begin? I think we should make the rosti. Okay, let's make it. We have we're a mandolin. We're going to use a fancy piece of machinery here. Yes. This is a mandolin. Very dangerous. So when we're at home, you know, cooking at the house and maybe a glass of wine or use something. Use caution. Please use caution. I am not going to use the safety. The safety uh, You're not going to use... Oh, You're not using a stunt double either, no, are you? I'm, I'm going to go solo. <laughs> but please, when we're at home, this is a very wonderful piece of uh, equipment, but it can be very dangerous. Very sharp, yes. Very sharp. These blades here are incredibly sharp, so you want to be very cautious okay. when you are doing this. So we're going to take a potato that we've peeled. Is this a regular Idaho potato? It's a potato? rusted Idaho potato. Okay. We're going to put the uh, canola oil into the pan that we want very hot, and we want to be generous here with the oil. A lot of it is going to remain in the pan throughout the cooking process and won't seep into the potato, but we want a nice base of oil so that the potatoes don't stick. Okay, I see. Very okay? good. And very simply, we want to grab the potato. And this is a very important process, an it indispensable is. tool in the kitchen, the mandolin. Look, immediately, you get these fine matchstick Very simple. We want to go right the into the, it's like a, a julienne almost. Yes. But it's a little bit more rustic than a julienne. But look julienne. how quickly you're able to do it with a mandolin. Then we really? want to go salt. We're going to go quick because the oil is getting hot. That's right. Salt. And you're my pepper girl. That's right. And the pepper girl. Okay. Pizza. Yes. Oh, goodness. This is a very That's large pepper girl. We're out of the gun. We're out of the gun. Yes. Okay. okay. This is hot. Nice hot pan. And very, very, just toss in that salt and okay. pepper. Okay. Very quickly. Good. And we're just going to drop it in. And that's a That's what we want right hot there. Pan. That's what we want. Now, I can use my fingers because I've done this 9,000 times. 9,000 at least. But you could grab a spoon. Yes. And if you could just kind of mash that down. Certainly. Kind of make like a circular motion. And then we'll get going on the lamb. Let's give it a little shake. Okay. Give it a little shake. All right. See, it's released. Yes. So we have, we have no sticking. That means we're very successful. And our, you know, because it can get... It can get hairy over there. Sure, sticky, if it sticks to the pan. Then you're, you know, it, you're in trouble. A, you're in big trouble. We're going to start all over again. We're just about ready to go in the oven. Like 450 is good. Okay. If you want to crank it up to 500, that's fine as well. Let's go in the Let's oven. Let's go. All right. I think we should move on to the lamb. This is one that we've already butchered earlier. I, we're going to show the. And this our, is Frenched. That is Frenched. Perfect. Okay. And this is not Frenched. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do our little trick here. This is, it can be intimidating rack of lamb. It's a specialty item that you don't, you know, often see on a regular basis, but very holiday, you know, Thanksgiving, Christmas time. Oh, it's beautiful Christmas presentation time. for a holiday. And it, it, you know, the lamb, the domestic lamb is so tender. Yes. And so beautiful. And it's just, it melts in your mouth. If it's cooked properly, it's really wonderful. Um, we're going to start by just peeling back this cap here. You know, many times you can just use the natural seams. Yes. And the natural tissues will come apart with your hand. So we're just going to very gently pull back And you don't even require cap. a knife to do this. Well, th this at this stage we don't. One motion right towards the bone, but we don't want to cut into the meat. So we're not sawing. It's no, just this is one, a one clean motion. One motion. So again, we want to angle the knife to follow the contour of the bones. Okay. You want to peel back. And as you're cutting, peel back. You know, you want to be very patient and it will come. What can we do with the scraps? Do well, they we serve any purpose for us? We could definitely use it roasting. We could, you know, okay. peel this um, off the blade here. You can yes. peel this meat off. We could saute this up 
and use it for making sauces. And you could also grind up some of this meat and maybe use it for a burger. Yeah. If you wanted to make like a lamb burger. Cooked something from the show? Went to a restaurant that you loved? Found a place serving innovative cocktails or impressive wine? Become a fan of The Chef's Kitchen on Facebook and share your thoughts. We're back with more from The Chef's Kitchen. This is a little tricky. You want to follow the bone with the knife. Okay. You're making like a, a nice, gentle cutting motion, and you want to flip it over now and grab the... So grab the meat. Grab the meat and just follow the bone down. Okay, this is to achieve that clean that look. Front, yes, exactly. That really clean look that we have in the bones. So now that you, is so dramatic in a, in a presentation. So now you've got your discard yes. portion here, and just very simply trim it out. But again, these are great pieces of meat with not a lot of fat on, especially on those interior totally pieces. Totally edible. A little bit of a little bit of uh, silver skin. Yes. But again, usable. Grind it. Sure. Burgers. Lamb burger. I love your lamb. idea for a lamb burger. It's you know. It's, it's a, a great, great use for that. And you know, we have to be cost effective these days. Well, especially in a restaurant business too, you don't want to waste any part of the animal. You want to utilize as much as you can. You know, the Italians are famous for that. The Chinese yes. are famous for that. Sure. Really utilizing all. Uh, areas and all aspects of whatever it is they're butchering. This is the end product. Nice Beautiful, clean. nice French uh, rack of lamb. And we have a nice hot pan here. Yes, we're going to put some oil on the pan. So more canola oil, right? More canola, yes. Good. We could actually do a splash of extra V in here. Is that for Give the a little flavor? flavor? A little flavor. Okay. Generous with the salt and the pepper. Huh? And you're my P -P -P. P girl. P -P -P. Tilt the pan away from you so the oil doesn't splatter up and drop away from you. Okay. So we've got this lamb going nicely. The roasties in the oven. We've got some beautiful baby spinach that we're going to be sautéing with some garlic. Nice. And I've got a trick for pomegranate that's coming up a little bit Ooh, later. Oh, good. Yeah, so and we're, we're also going to, we have a brown butter sauce that we're going to make. Uh, this lamb is looking good. We're almost ready for a flip. Let's take a look, see how we're doing. See, we have nice oh. color there. Excellent. Nice, beautiful brown color. Chef David Ross. Chef hey. David. Hey. How are you, buddy? Yeah. And, of course, we're celebrating Kennebunkport style. And Absolutely. you own a restaurant in Kennebunk, 50 I Local. Yes, 50 yes. Local, right? The two of you have a history in Boston, is that correct? Well, Dave and I have known each other for years. Oh, yeah. Back when oh, we was yeah. at Sasso and Luca. Okay. Right. Yeah, yeah, in the North End. And, uh, you know, we, uh, we actually were on a golf trip together a couple of years ago really? in Ireland. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, in Ireland. Oh, yeah. Was. Oh, you yeah. Boston we went guys to the Ryder really Cup together. Fun. That's right. Really? We were on a trip with a bunch of other restaurateurs, and, and uh, we had a great time. But not as great as tonight's going to be at uh, your place. That's right. I heard you were by, and I want to come over and invite you guys. I know you're having the gala tonight. I want to come yes. over and invite you to an after party at the 50 local at our restaurant. It's the God, I will be gala, there. Absolutely. The Thank you, chef. Bash. Very gentleman. It, it would be my beautiful. honor to cook for all you chefs, and you, you as well, Tina. Wonderful. And now, so you've relocated from Boston here in Kennebunk. Correct. With your family, correct? Yes. Yep. My wife is originally from Kennebunk, okay. and uh, we decided that, you know, we had a little boy, and we can bring him over here, and this is just the greatest place we love it here. It's a lovely community. Absolutely. Yes. We use all local food, local produce. Our meats are local. So most of our food is coming within 20 miles or so of the, of the area. And what's the style of the cuisine on your menu? Uh, we are a American bistro. Okay. So it's a lot of standard classics with a local flair, steak frites, also uh, lobster carbonara. Um, so, you know, standard food, really fun food. And you and your wife are both in the restaurant? Correct. Yep. Okay. Yep. I do Early, the back. Yeah. She does Early the front. the front, absolutely. like old school. Yeah, absolutely. That's Candace and I did that so for years. It's a real family affair. Yes, yeah. yes. We're great. very excited. Very, very, excited. very nice. We're very proud of you, Dave. Thank you. Chef, awesome job with your restaurant. And thank you for the invite. And yes, look, we will be there. What time I'm doing a show in Boston, you can come and crash my show. Okay. You got it, buddy. And it's a reciprocal you got it. invitation. That's right. We like that. So you'll be joining us at the end of the tasting, correct? Yes, yes, that would be great. Wonderful. We'll see you at the Thank end. Thank you David. so much. Appreciate Thank it. You so Thanks much for, for coming your on, Chef. Great to the see you. Looks awesome. Thanks, buddy. Don't you love the Chef's Kitchen? We always have visitors coming to and fro. I mean, from Boston. Always surprises. From local, from Canada. How nice is that? Tonight okay. will be a party night. We're going to do the spinach tonight. tonight. Okay. Now we're going to do the spinach. And actually. now. And we're going to do spinach tonight for the, uh, the tasting menu. Spinach all the time. Great. So let's do a little bit of extra virgin olive hot oil. Hot pan again, olive yeah, oil. Yeah, well, I don't want it too hot. It's important to understand why people are afraid of olive oil, extra virgin olive oil. Yes. It burns at a lower point of temperature. A okay. little garlic in there. Okay, would you add the whole thing? Uh, yes, please. Okay. And w the lamb I pulled off set because we were hanging out with Dave. We're going to go right into the oven with this gorgeous lamb. Beautiful. We've got a nice golden brown GB&D, right? So we seared it, and now it's going into the oven to finish cooking. With the potato cake, the aromas of those two will blend nicely together. 
good. We're already getting. I love the smell of, of fresh I, oh, garlic. Oh, garlic and olive oil. Oh, well, that goes God. back to your respect for Italian cooking, the especially what you do there in Stella in Boston. We, uh, you know right? what? Five and a half years, Stella. Has it been five and a half years? Yeah, it's amazing. Wow. Not going away, right? So. And you're in the South End yeah, in Boston. In the correct? South End on Washington Street. A very hip area, is that right? Yeah. Well, you know, we gotta stay up with the times and try to, you know. Be as cool and fun as we uh, as you know, we you can. You have so outdoor seating. We have a nice it's patio. very lively. Let's get back to cooking. <laughs> Spinach is going in. All right. Okay. Very quick toss. Okay. Very simple. And of course, this will this will cook down very shortly. Very quickly. We want to put some uh, salt and pepper in there. Absolutely. Go right back in there. Oh, so we're keeping this dish handy, right? Right. Because okay. we're gonna go right back into the dish. Okay. Don't go away. We'll be right back. We now return to the chef's kitchen. Now we don't want to cook this too much because, you know, we're setting up. This is all the miso pasta that we're getting ready for the dish. Okay, so we want some life in it still. Right, and we can add a little bit more olive oil in there because it's a little dry. Okay. And prevent again, from that sticking. flavor exactly yes. prevent from sticking. There's so much water in the spinach. You know, it's 98 percent water. Yes. So we just want to get that tossed, and that's pretty much it. I mean, this is gonna. You How know, simple is that? Really? Simple and delicious. So healthy too and very light. Very light. Just some olive oil, garlic, and spinach. Don't you love our beautiful flowers on this set? So yes. seasonal. Very seasonal, very beautiful. Gorgeous, vibrant colors. Butter. Okay, that's it. We're going to make brunoisette, which is a classic dish, a, gla a classic preparation. Begin many sauces with brunoisette. You can use it for pastry. Brunoisette is basically whole butter that we cook down. It's not, you're not reducing it, right? but you're separating the milk solids okay. from the actual fat. So it's almost like a clarification process? It's like a clarification. Okay. Except we're, we're gonna, we're the milk solids are gonna remain in here ah. because we're making a sauce for the lamb. See ah. how we're getting the coloring here, the Every, browning? Yes. Okay, we, you have to, Clear. at this stage, you wanna kinda pull it off and put it back and kinda so, hang out with it. So as not to burn it. Right, and we okay. have some beautiful fresh rosemary over there. Yes, and our flowers, you know, I neglected to mention, are from Sawyer and Company. Oh, Sawyer, was great nice? company, How local. Local I company. would do a nice handful in there. Okay. We want a lot of oh, robust it? rosemary flavor. This sauce is very simple. It's another herb you like is rosemary. I love, I love rosemary. rosemary too, actually. That's great. See, so that's woodsy beautiful. and earthy. We're gonna put a little salt in here and a little pepper. Ah, uh, yes, my job. Pea girl, that's some pea. So this is perfect right here. Let's perfect. remove this from the, the heat. Good. Let it sit over here. I would like the would you pomegranate. Like her? I'm ready for her. Would you like her? Yes, I love her. Yes. She's Don't we so all love beautiful. pomegranate? We do. Pomegranates are great, but they're a pain in the... Yes. ...to get the seeds <laughs> out. So I have a trick, ladies and gentlemen, that we're gonna, I'm gonna they, share they with you. They have gorgeous seeds. They're such a vibrant, beautiful, ruby red color. And a wonderful uh, mm -hmm. antioxidant for your system. So show us system. how to get right. into one of those. Cut this, cut this in half. Look at that juice, it's beautiful. It's oh, gorgeous, it. isn't it? Yes. Now most people would start peeling the pomegranate like this and breaking it. Flip the pomegranate over into your hand. Okay. With the cut side exposed and go over a surface that's large enough to catch the seeds as they shoot out of here. So this okay? is how to catch the seeds, now, get you them know, out. It's like that whack-a-mole thing, just kick the, start hitting it. Start hitting it, there surrounding. It and look at this, it's raining. This it's is a raining great pomegranates. Tip. It's raining pomegranate seeds. This is an excellent way to get these seeds out without. And it's uh, a lot faster. Without cutting through them very look fast. At all seed and just a little bit of this, um, the, the skin here, this yes, uh, the membra pulp, the almost, membrane. The membrane. Right. So you could, you know what? This is this a is great a wonderful technique. Tip. Ten Look at seconds, that. we have a, a plate Eight full seconds, of ten seconds later, we have a beautiful pomegranate. We can eat one too. Yes, absolutely. Mm. And, you know, uh -huh. at this stage, so you can cook these, but I love them raw. I just eat them, um, they're just delicious. And they're I so will, good for you. I will sprinkle a little bit of salt on them, though. Okay. It's a little, a little flavor, just a, a little complexity. Bit of, just, you know, a little bit of flavor to be popped out there. And we're. Set them now, aside. are these going to garnish our dish? They are going to garnish Ooh, the dish, yes. I love yes. that. And you can see the juice that you get from this. Look yes. at how rich that color is, the oh, vibrancy. Drizzle that over red. some yogurt. You, could, oh. you know, we, I, sometimes we reduce this pomegranate juice, make, it make a sauce, and make a syrup, and a oh. nice glaze, like finishing sauce. Beautiful. Let's put together our dish. So our lamb is finished. How long did that take in the oven? About eight minutes. Okay. Very important again, let the meat rest for you at least ten minutes. You are full of great tips. Ten minutes. Today. 
Let's put some of the spinach on our plate. We have our potato cake that we've pulled out of the oven. You see how and nice and crispy, crispy it is? It came. Okay, it's almost gonna... like a, uh, an extra large potato chip. It is like a, it's almost really? chippy. It's almost chippy. It's chippy. You could, I was gonna say, you could you could even maybe put some smoked salmon on top of that as it an appetizer. Like, a, like an hors d'oeuvre, yep, absolutely. Fresh. A little bit of dollop of caviar. This is a great, that was a great recipe that you shared with us for that. Very Roasty. simple. And we're going to take a little triangle, a little wedge, put it on the plate, okay. nice and crispy. The contour of the bone will dictate where the knife goes. Yeah, so this so, can be intimidating for any home cook, too. It is, certainly is cutting could. through a rack of lamb. Look so at that color. So as long as you follow, it's, it's cooked perfectly, chef. And you know, lamb, you don't want a lamb to be too rare. If it's too rare, then it's not as palatable. I, I like yes. it to be a, a little towards the medium side, but still medium rare. And you can see the sauce is almost developing from the yes, juice it from, is. The, from the spinach. Uh, as it the sort spinach. of sits on the plate there. Right. Beautiful. This is very an simple presentation. Is, and this should be an entree portion. Absolutely. Very is plenty, generous entree very, portion. Very, very generous portion here. Okay. We're going to take a couple pomegranate seeds, just drizzle them on the plate. Nice, sweet touch. And then let's get the rosemary brown butter that we've had resting That's right. back here. That's right. Here we here. go. So now we just want to kind of take the top layer off. Okay. So we're going to leave the rosemary actually the rosemary in the pan. in the sauce, right? Okay. And then we're just going to drizzle right over the lamb. This is not really a, you know, an intense sauce. This is more like an essence of rosemary. Like a drizzle. A drizzle, right. A drizzle. A little bit over the potato. There you go. Okay, well Evan, let's go pair this with some wine and taste. Let's do it. Stay tuned. We'll be back with more from the Chef's Kitchen. We're back at the tasting, and joining us, of course, is Evan Deluti of Stella Restaurant, who created this wonderful meal. Thank you. And we have David Ross from 50 Local here in Kennebunkport. And we're so pleased to have with us Philippe Newlin of Vintus Fine Wine Importers, based up here in the Northeast. Thank and you. you've paired our beautiful dish today with an exquisite wine. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Well, fantastic. Thank you, Tina. This is actually a Malbec from Argentina, mm. from a little property called Finca de Cerro. And, you know, Argentina is definitely a meat culture, so I thought yes. we have beautiful meat here. We have fantastic Malbec, and I think you're going to find that this is going to pair just beautifully. You were talking about the aromas of the herbs that were yes. used. Right, this the rosemary. And rosemary, all these wonderful savory things. Here, with the Malbec, mm, what we're going to find yes. is that there are these beautiful aromas from the high desert where it's grown. Oh. You have these beautiful violets violet aromas that come through. And obviously Malbec is a wonderful alternative to Cabernet Sauvignon, but it brings something more to the meal. It's a very juicy, mm. sort of lush type of grape. Well, perfect. We have the pomegranates here to, exactly. to work off of that uh, and our, wood, of that. our woodsy rosemary. And again, we are so excited tonight, Chef David Ross, to be coming to your restaurant, 50 Local, for the After Gala Bash. Absolutely. It's yes. going to be my pleasure to cook for you. Should be a great time here in Kennebunk, a really wonderful opportunity for us. And okay. shall we toast, gentlemen, to a fabulous yeah. weekend, Boston flavors and Kennebunk style. Awesome. Cheers, Chef. Cheers, Chef. Of course, job. wonderful to be great. here in glorious Maine. Mm. A fine choice. Thank uh, rosti. Thank you. Palm rosti. Palm rosti. And, and the lamb. Beautiful lamb with spinach, spinach, garlic, lots of olive oil, yeah. a little dash of pomegranate seeds. Mm. Mm. Yeah, David, you must try. Oh, beautiful. Fantastic. This looks outstanding. Thank you. So, so good. The lamb Perfectly is perfect. Arrested. And you know what? In keeping with your tradition, un uncomplicated flavors. We can really taste the lamb. We can taste the spinach. That's an excellent point. We were talking earlier about the sauce mm -hmm. and the simplicity of it. I'm not a big masker of, of flavor. Right. I want the, the protein to shine. I want to taste that lamb and balance it out with this beautiful wine. Mm. And Great it, combination. It pairs perfectly with the wine. This was an exquisite choice, Philippe. Well, thank you so much. I want to thank all of you for joining us here today. Boston Flavors, Kennebunkport style. It's a fabulous weekend here in Kennebunkport. Let's enjoy. Thanks to you. Well done, Chef. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah, delicious. Excellent. Cheers. We're back with Bruce Elam of Shipyard Brewery. And we're celebrating winter with this next brew that we you're are. going to show for us today. Prelude, it's called. That's right. This is our winter seasonal. It's called Prelude Ale. 
very rich, nutty, complex beer. Mm -hmm. uh, a true winter warmer. Nice warming alcohol you're going to get in the flavor of this at 6.7%. Um, there's some nice dark malts I uh, use mm -hmm. here. Crystal going to give you a nutty flavor. A little chocolate malt. Oh, even, chocolate a little, malt. even a little roasted barley to give it a, just a little bit of an edge. And very nicely balanced with a nice complex uh, hop profile. Due to its popularity and a, sort of a cult following that it's gotten over, over the years, it's now our full blown winter seasonal. So it's available uh, starting in November and probably wow. through most of January. High in demand. If we want to enjoy and maybe learn a little bit about the brewing process, uh, Shipyard offers wonderful brew three-day educational Our brewing seminars, vacation. really. That's right. It's a three-day experience. We bring them in during the week, so they're really going to see the real production operations in the brewery. Yes. It's very, very, very interesting. Hands on, very hands-on, very interactive. Get to talk with the brewers, get to see the, the, um, the facility in Portland. That's right. Get a little free time to do some shopping in Bunkport. Sounds like a fantastic Something for everyone. Yes. Definitely. So let's try this one. It's a little bit of a darker color. You can color. see how dark it is. Very yes. rich in color. Yes. Probably pairs well with hearty stews. It does. Anything hearty would be good. Anything sweet, mm. this would be quite good with, too. Great, great dessert wine or dessert beer I could I could definitely It would be good see. with anything caramel or chocolatey Car it would be very good with this You can you can sense the chocolate notes in it with a little bit of spice as well That's the hops Very that smooth here, yeah. hot a little bit of that heat That warming there. alcohol what like is a true, that? that's a true winter that's the alcohol you're, you're feeling Yes here. That warms up in the mouth at 6.7% percent you are going to get a little bit of that in the flavor profile It's fantastic Perfect for the colder months Absolutely Okay but get it fast because it's when winter's be gone, gone, so is the prelude. Prelude's gone. True. Thank you so much, Bruce, for sharing thanks. this wonderful brew with us today. It's been a treat to have you on. Well, thanks for having me. Cooked something from the show? Went to a restaurant that you loved? Found a place serving innovative cocktails or impressive wine? Become a fan of The Chef's Kitchen on Facebook and share your thoughts.